Hi, I'm Julio Barros from eString.com. A lot of people ask me about creating custom table cells, and I want to show you a quick way to do it with Interface Builder. First, let me point out that the default UI table cell view has space for an image on the left, a text string in the middle, and a disclosure indicator on the right. Sometimes we want to create a custom cell with more information. In this video, we're going to create a very simple cell with two strings, the state name and the capital name, but this technique can be extended to create as fancy a cell as you would like. We are keeping the example in the code as simple as possible so we can focus on creating a cell with Interface Builder without getting caught up in other details. First, we will create a navigation-based project. We can see that it runs and gives us an empty table. In the header of the root view controller, I'll create two NSRA instance variables for the states and capitals. In the implementation file, I'll create and initialize both arrays. In the number of rows section, I return the size of the states array. And in the cell for row at index path, I can leave in the template code for now and set the cell's text to the state name at the position of the index path row. When we run the app, we see that the table is now filled in with states names. Suppose we want to add the capital. Of course, instead of just strings, we can just append them together. It's kind of plain, but it works. Now suppose we want to lay things out a little bit differently. Say we want to have the state name over the capital. There are three common approaches to doing this. The first approach is to use the standard UI table view cell, but add the text labels as subviews, which we will lay out in code. We do this by creating a CG rec frame that specifies where the labels will be in our table cell. When we create the cell, we create the two labels we need, init them with their frame, give them a tag, and add them to the cell's content view as subviews. The tag lets us ID the views later and pull those out of the content view. We can see that this works fine and we can adjust the label properties in code as we desire. If we want more programmatic control over the cell, we can create a subclass of UI table view and manage the views in a similar way in code, which is the second method, but I won't say any more about that here. The third method is an extension of the second method where we subclass UI table view cell and use the interface builder to lay out its contents. The first step is to create a new subclass of UI table view cell, say custom cell. In the header, I create two instance variables and properties and then synthesize them in the implementation file. I then create a new view based nib. Here, I remove the default UI view and add a UI table view cell. In the Identity Inspector, I change the type to my new custom cell. And in the Attributes Inspector, I set the identifier to custom cell. It does not need to be the same as the class or nib name, but it often is. I then add the two labels and change their attributes as I like. Including, for example, the font and color. Now the trick is to hook up the labels that I just added to the custom cell outlets. Note, we are pretty much ignoring the files owner, which is often a view controller. Then in the root view controller, in cell for row at index path, we look for the new identifier, change the cell type, you'll need to import the new header, and then if we don't find a custom cell, we can load one from the nib we just created. We do that using NS Bundle's load nib name, which re returns an array of the objects found in the nib. We can't be sure which of these objects is our table view cell, so we'll scan the array until we find it. Once we have the cell, we can access its instance variables and set its properties as we desire. Our cell is still not too attractive, but we can now customize and extend it using Interface Builder. And of course, the cell can be enhanced to include population and other state-related information. Thanks for sticking with me. I hope I've been able to show you something new. The source code for this example is at eString.com. Let me know if you have any comments or questions or if there's anything I can improve on with this approach or clarify in the presentation. Thanks.